school for scoundrels. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Cam, and welcome back to the Phillips Project, where myself and Jake from 3D Movie Cinema are going to be reviewing every Todd Phillips directed movie in honor of Joker Folly Ado coming to theaters in just a couple of weeks. We've already covered everything. Everything up until we covered road trip. We covered old school Starsky and Hutch. Now we're covering school for scoundrels. That's it. Yeah, up to Starsky and Hutch. The playlist link is in the eye in the right hand corner. Go check that out if you are so inclined. But tonight we're going to be taking a look at the a movie that sits in the middle ground, an awkward middle ground between eras for Phillips as a director. It's the closing of one at era and the beginning of another in a way. We're talking about schools for school for scoundrels, but Jacob Collins, uh, how are you doing? Surviving a hurricane? Oh man, man, oh, survive this hurricane, man! Just to talk about school for scoundrels. Oh, I'm going through hell just for this movie, okay, man? I I just want you to know that, man. Never let it be known that Jacob Collins did not have his priorities in order as a human being. This was released in 2006. It starred John Hader, Billy Bob Thornton, Sarah Silverman, and Michael Clark Duncan, among many other comedic actors that just is pretty much playing like a game of, I know you, I know yeah, you, I definitely yeah. know you from somewhere. It's Jim but, Parsons from Big Bang Theory is sitting right there, who doesn't have one line of dialogue. Here exactly. like, Jim <laughs> but uh, the movie tells the story of a young man named Roger, played by Hater, who basically has crippling social anxiety. Like in the very beginning of the film, he is giving a ticket because he works for the he's a meter maid for the NYPD. Pretty much, he's giving a ticket to to somebody, and when and when like they for they like even put a little bit of effort into saying like, hey. Like, this is BS and you know it. They go after him, shoot out his tire with a gun, and he faints. And so he not only pays the ticket himself, but then they take his badge and his uniform. But and so shoot. so he takes a class where it, I'm going to call it a confidence class because that's exactly what it is. That is led by a man named Dr. P, played by Billy Bob Thornton. Yes, that Billy Bob Thornton. And hijinks ensue from there. Collins, the theme of this review is going to be like we're at the definitive end of Phillips's early years, and like this movie is like the closing of that chapter of his career. And the next movie we're going to be talking about is a little movie called The Hangover, which is the thing that most people know him for. So yeah. it's weird where you can pinpoint the end of an era for someone, but this is like the end of an era for someone in School for Scoundrels, almost. The theme of this one's like more or less like, you know, being your own man, I guess. Being your, essentially your own man, like self, you know, self-confidence boosting and stuff, because John Hader is a loser in this movie. Like, he's literally like the punching bag. Like, there's literally just like, he's just like getting beat up and laughed at and everything, and eventually takes a self-help class, which... Basically, I the, the, the Billy Bob Thornton's class is the funniest part of this movie. Like yeah. we're talking off line, off screen. Like this is a funny class because everything they keep doing in this movie is just like Billy Bob Thornton is the biggest dick on the planet. You know, I would say, well, no, it's the second one because Michael Clark Duncan is a rapist in this movie, literally you, a yeah. rapist in this movie. Yeah, and he is just when you think Billy Bob Thornton is like the biggest dick. Michael Clark Duncan like over exceeds him. He's like, oh no, I am a bigger team because there's literally a paintball scene where Michael Clark Duncan kidnaps three people and is going to rape them. And, and I'm like, what? We're the not fuck? kidding, folks. He literally has three grown ass men over a log with their pants off, not showing any butts, thank the Lord. They're in their but, underwear. But they're in their underwear and he's about to do the thing and it Thank God John Hader's character Roger is there with a paintball and shoots him with a paintball right between the eyes. Credit to Michael Clark Duncan for the amazing sell, by the way. His eyes roll into the back of his head and he faints. I, I, got, laugh so hard. I laughed so hard at that. He's like, hey, Lester. Uh. I mean, seriously, they're like literally like he's like the whole paintball scene is hilarious. Because he's like, like, they're literally just shooting each other. He's like, spread out, you bunch of retards. What are you spread? And so they're just going. Do, 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 do. It's, just like, it's just so dumb because it's like, why are you shooting each other? They like, keep shooting Bill Hader for no reason. I, I, or 
John, or, Bill, no, not Bill. Uh, John Hader. John Hader. Excuse me. They keep shooting John Hader's character for no reason. Like one dude. Like, sh- hey, Matt Walsh like, like, four times, and I'm just sitting there like, what does this has this man done to you lately? I don't understand. He's the weaker one. That's why. No. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, but uh, I guess to summarize, when it's just focused on this confidence class. It's the best part because let's not get it twisted. Billy Bob Thornton plays Billy Bob Thornton. If you've seen Bat Santa, you've seen his performance in the movie pretty much. He plays the same character in every fucking movie. Like even down to his cadence. Like you could be like, well, you can stick it up your ass for all I care. And you can literally name up oh, Bat Santa or even Bat Santa too. <laughs> I mean, literally, I like that the thing is though, whenever my he every time he's on screen i laugh because it's like he's literally is like he said like when he's calling the phone he's like just press the button just press the tim button asshole and then he's like <laughs> and somebody calls him back it's, just, it's so funny and then later on he's like is this like a, i thought this was a self-confidence boosting class he goes, this is not a damn tony robbins seminar if you're looking for self-help books you can get the fuck out of here like that to me i was like <laughs> it's like <laughs> laughing it's just like you know like that and then just every time he teaches a class like he goes what is the one thing men want the tit and he said <laughs> and it's like and it's just like a one ball guy gets them. he literally draws a boob on a chalkboard folks like like just like and it's literally just a big old half a circle and a smaller circle like i'll put a clip in and post just to show like what we're talking about here but just that's that's who we're dealing with here so I'm not deriding Billy Bob Thornton. I'm just, I, my point is, is like he, he knows his strengths and he plays into those in this movie. There's not a lot of. I have one issue though. One issue is that why he has that awful hair dye job. Yeah. In this movie, because we all know he has white hair. Like I mean, it's like Steve Martin. There's two actors you could think of that always have white hair: is Billy Bob Thornton and Steve Martin. And why the hell did they make him wear? I guess they wanted to make him look younger, but because I guess it'd be less creepy, it'd be more creepy, less creepy if he had black hair. Because if he looks older, like he's her grandfather, her dad, then it would probably look creepier for him to pursue John Heater's girl. Well, yeah, the thing I have issues with is there's a love story in this movie, and it's just so fucking boring. Like, I don't care about this love story. It's like, to me, it's like the strongest suit is the school. Literally, the school for scoundrels is what I like. Then they go to this love story, and then the school becomes more after this, like after the paintball scene, the story, the story about the you know the school becomes more of a side plot, and then the love story becomes the center focus. Like, oh, it's it's Billy Bob Thornton trying to get his girl, and then John Heater's trying to win her back over, and I'm like, that's not what I signed up for. Yeah, that almost felt like Napoleon Dynamite almost when Uncle Rico like is trying to go after the girl Napoleon Dynamite's trying to go for. I don't know. Maybe I've just I made that distinction because Bill Hader is in both movies. John Heater. John Heater. Not Bill I, Hader. John Heater. I did it again. Dang it. But John Heater is in both of those movies. But I don't know. That's that's the first thing that my head went to. Napoleon Dynamite is much cooler than uh, oh. Napoleon Dynamite is much cooler than this. By dude. by a lot, he's literally a punching bag. Like mm-hmm. I would say, his character in the Bench Warmers, his John Heater's character in the Bench Warmers, is less of a dwarf than this character. This character literally is just like um, like he just gets beat up. Like literally, there is like Don Dan Fogler literally just goes around bullying. You know. Like I laugh so hard whenever he told me you have to initiate confrontation, and he beats the guy's sandwich, and then gets the swir- the cheese, the cheese Danish, and he gets a swirly from him. Even the boss, like even uh, what, Luis Guzman is literally in the scene. I'm like, I didn't realize it just until I was rewatching. I'm like, that's Luis Guzman. Like he's in the scene too. Like his boss is even getting watching him get a swirly. I'm like, your boss is supposed to be not only your boss, your counselor. Like he's even getting bullied by his boss, and so it's like you would think, why don't you just quit your job? I mean, because it's like even your boss is bullying you, like every way. And so it's like it's so crazy that you know it's like, like the the movie's so crazy because like especially the confrontation. Like I was in there watching a couple of these things. I'm like, I feel like his is the lesser of all the confrontations because the other, well, the cab driver beats a people's windshield in, which I'm like, 
how do they not report you when you lose your job and face charges? One of them starts a fight in a subway, which I texted you. Todd Phillips is a real weird thing about subways. He must have had one bad experience and is like, well, subways are dead to me now. I won't even go into the sandwich restaurant. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, hey, keep it down. He says, and the guy who plays Hector in every single freaking movie he's in, like, look, Google it. He plays, he plays Hector, that guy who is in Fast and Furious and a lot of other movies. He always plays a character called Hector. Pretty much, yeah. And then, uh, and so he plays a guy, and he's like, hey, keep it down. Would you? Goes, how would you like to? Goes now. How would you like to die? And he slaps him in the face. Where I'm like. Oh, he's getting his ass beat. And they never go back to them. I wanted to see him get his ass beat. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see what was going down there. But uh, like I said. <laughs> that guy just looks at him like, oh, you're dead. And then on top of it, then he got like, uh, what's his name? Uh, I forget his name. The one who's, we we just mentioned him and he was in Twisters. Like as the, you know, uh, forget his name. Paul Shear, I think his name. Paul, Paul Shear, Shear, yes, yes. Yeah, Paul Shear just is like, gets a, he gets like, Jello and just smears on some old person's face. I'm just that's like, just oh. rude. Like that's not even a confrontation. That's just you be trying to be rude. You're just assaulting somebody at that point. Yeah, pretty. Confrontation much. is like you're confronting somebody. Yeah, it, it, like assault. Like I said, th this movie is really just like a, a charcuterie board of like comedic actors in the 2000s, pretty much. You got David Cross, you got Horatio Sands, you got Matt Walsh, there's Matt Walsh again, play whose name is quite literally Walsh. Then you got uh, Aziz Ansari is like has a small role in this movie. Yeah, he asks he asks what a swirly is. That's how you know it's him. <laughs> it's like I received one of those as well. <laughs> and I mean, like this is literally, and then you got Jim Parsons in a background cameo, and then you got the uh, one guy, the blonde hair with glasses, I forget his name. He's in a bunch of comedies like Haunted House and Yogi. He's like the main villain in the Yogi Bear mo live action movie. He was literally oh, in the class that too. Guy. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, hey. I know exactly who you mean. I'm like, he's in the class too, and and then you got like a couple of other actors. You're like, oh, they were in old school. They're in this movie too. It's like it's like literally Todd Phillips is just like got like all of his buddies and just like it's like Todd Phillips knows how to pick them, you know, in a sense because it's like. I mean, it's it's a really good line. Also, I do like though whenever, whenever like Billy Bob Thornton, I do like when him and Billy Bob Thornton are going to war with each other. Like how literally he uh, he spray paints the he gets the his buddies like Paul Shear and dress up like cops, and then they vandalize something to try to like make it look like he's a stalker and spray paints "suck me" on the dog. And then he's like, "I didn't do this," and he goes, and they said, and then he, Billy Bob whispers, like, who, "Okay, who painted the damn dog?" It's pretty neat, right? He goes, no, it's not neat. I'm like, he painted a damn doll. I was like, that made me laugh when he said that. Like, okay, who painted a damn doll? <laughs> by the way, uh, like, by the way, Andy Daly, that's the name of the actor in question. Andy Daly. Yeah, he's in a lot of movies. And he's really great. Yeah, which everyone in it is, I think the paintball scene is really funny. And then, of course, you know, you have like the confrontation. I really think also like when they're playing tennis and he keeps hitting Billy about throwing with a tennis ball. <laughs> About the, uh, you got it from me. And it's like, you know, there's like scenes like that is what I like, especially uh, whenever he gets him fired because he tows Billy about Thornton's car, and then he gets him fired. And so, which, and then he writes that, and then gets, uh, he gets, um, what's his name, Lesher, to write a love letter to the captain with his name. To which I'm like, he can never prove he wrote this, okay, just because he wrote his name and sent it to him. Like, like I, I would say, I would say you could dispute that, you know, I mean, like. Literally, it'd be like if I wrote a love letter, you know, to your boss and then put your name on it. And then, like, you could dispute that saying, hey, that's not my handwriting or, or hey, that is not, you know, like that is not accurate. Like, you know, like, why would I send this? Like, you can you prove do you have photos? You could literally show him on camera or somebody like get in that letter. You could there's he could get a lawyer and disprove like that. He didn't send that letter. You know, I'm just saying like that to me. <laughs> but I guess like they all hated him anyway. So they're like, yeah, let's let you know, which that also think it's so funny when he just shows up for confrontation to the basketball, the people that shot his, you know, tires out. <laughs> so he sticks a knife and stabs the basketball. <laughs> and then he's about to get his ass beat before the mom comes in and makes him get back the shoes. That was pretty funny. I mean, but my issue, like, you know, and also the airplane sequence, I thought was pretty good whenever, like, but I just feel like the movie feels like, though, once you get past the paintball scene, there are some funny moments in it. But it's not to me as funny as when you as the movie. Like I would honestly say, 
it slows the movie down the love story like let me just for perspective wise the movie is a hundred minutes long that's not the worst run time in the world it's an hour and 40 minutes i feel like the movie could have easily been 90 minutes or maybe shorter i feel like after the paintball scene like you mentioned jake i feel like after the paintball scene it just kind of became a little repetitive and so you just it's like it felt like a what if scenario like what if we actually like had michael clark duncan in a blonde wig like what if and just like instead of like it just felt like they were padding things out and that was my feeling anyway and it also messed it kind of messed the story up to me it made me feel like okay it was a funny joke that michael clark duncan was a rapist like was like an alleged rape. like but then you actually make him when we find out ben stiller by the way ben stiller has a cameo because they just did Tar star skin hutch with top Phillips. he plays a victim who who did took the class but apparently the uh billy bob thornton took his girl took his girl and then he tried to get her back so then michael clark duncan's character lesher rapes him and so i'm like what the fuck <laughs> like that is just like a sinister thing that like was like that is very dark. I'm like, that took the movie from like, you know, at least it was like, at least it was like when it's on a ledge rape, like, okay. Like when, when it was like, you know, like when he had them pit, pit down, I'm like, that's fucked up, but it's not like it did nothing happen. But when you find out Ben Stiller's back, you're like, okay, this is dark, man. I don't know why you should, I would have probably not went that direction. Cause I'm like, okay, you may, at least Michael Clark Duncan character was a funny character that was like, okay, he's, you know, he was a funny character with like some dark intentions. But then you make him a character with that is that character. I'm like, oh damn, you know, like that was like damn. I was like, and I kind of felt like, why? Although it was kind of funny though. At the end, whenever Ben Stiller took him at the end, you know, drug he drugs Michael Clark Duncan and then takes him in a helicopter into the middle of nowhere, and then then both of them are never heard from again. Yeah. To I which I'm just like, what the. <laughs> Lesh, he just ties Lesh. He's, I'm pretty sure I know what you can read between lines what he's going to do to Lesher. You can but I don't much really guarantee. want to. I don't really want to. That's the thing. But the thing is, that's like that. Todd Phillips, I don't know who wrote that, but I'm like, damn, that's dark. <laughs> like, and but I think to this put the love story. Period, I think to put the period at the end of the sentence for this review is that there are some genuinely funny bits here, some of which. I would argue saying like some of the hardest laughs I've ever had, like doing this project. At the same time, it's either, man, like you could have just cut that out entirely or you could have just cut that short and kept it like 85, 90 minutes. And I think it would have been like a little more streamlined. I feel like yeah. it became long-winded at points. It's still not going to stop me from giving this movie a good rating, a high good rating. <laughs> I it, The movie did succeed in its mission to make me laugh but at the same time i was just like why is that here like at, like i openly was just like like why is why are we doing this like it felt like a bet like a bet to include something like that in there especially michael clark duncan yeah. considering one of his more famous roles is john coffee from the green mile if you know you know I mean, sir, yeah, and then it's like you make him like if he's the opposite of John Clark. <laughs> he's the complete opposite, which, yeah, my, well, Michael Clark Duncan is good in this movie, but it's like, damn, the sub, sub stuff they gave him were like, oh man, I mean, I'm sure if he was, I'm sure he would not do these if he was alive today, he would not do those, you know, which, you know, he, by the way, RIP Michael Clark Duncan, man, he's such yes. a good actor. And I, it sucks that he was, you know, he died like 2012 or 2011. And man, I feel like that he's he's so good, you know. It really sucks that he's gone because I imagine he would have probably worked for Todd Phillips again, maybe on Joker or maybe on some something. You know, there's something he would have done. I, I guarantee you, he would have worked with Michael Bay again. Michael Clark sure. Duncan was awesome. I I don't think it really matter who like he would would have worked with. He would have just crushed it. Uh, rest in peace, sorely missed. I'm actually covering the Green Mile for the ninety nine project, but that's going to be in the coming months down the road. But uh, what did you all think of School for Scoundrels? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to read what you have to say. Thank you, Jacob, for wading through the Hurricane Francine in order to do this. I appreciate it. Hello. And uh, next up in the project, we have finally reached the uh, the one that 
pretty much launched Todd Phillips to the point where he is today. It's a little movie from 2009, the one-man wolf pack, The Hangover. But until then, for Jacob Collins, my name is Ryan Cam. We will see you all in the next one. Y'all take care.